Hello sixth graders, we are making clay gargoyles and before I do that I need to go over our three major clay building techniques, coil, slab, and pinch pot. I'm going to start off with coil. Um, first I need to get a piece of clay, make sure that I get it as coil-like shaped as possible before actually rolling it into a coil. The smaller it is, the easier it is to control. And um, I start with the tips of my fingers, roll all the way up to my palm, and then back. So that is using two hands is probably easier to control the clay, but another helpful tip is I start at the tips of my fingers, um, roll all the way out to my palm back, and then move it over a little. And then I move it over a little bit so that I am slowly making my way from one end to the other so it's more even. If it's too thin in one area, leave that area alone and move on to a thicker area so that it is more uniform. Um, Another helpful tip for uh, building your gargoyle is making pinch pots. So I have a ball of clay right here and I can turn it into a pinch pot as it is or I can make things easy on myself and use my fettling knife and cut it in half so that I have two halves to a ball of clay. Um, next step is to take my thumb, poke a hole through the middle of that uh, half ball of clay. Don't go all the way through. You don't want a clay donut. And then keeping my thumb on the inside, I just want to pinch and turn and pinch and turn and pinch and turn. It doesn't matter which hand you use as long as your thumb's in the middle. And the best thing to do is to pinch starting at the bottom and kind of turn and cycle my way all the way across the top until I get to the lip. The biggest problem my sixth graders have working with pinch pot is they make the bottom of it too thick and the top of it the lip too thin. You need to make sure that the walls all the way around the this is even and relatively uniform. You don't want the walls to be too thick. You want it to be about the size of your pinky. Thinner and it won't hold itself up very well. Thicker and it might crack or explode in the kiln. Can I make a second one here? There's a good chance you won't need pinch pots for this project, but some of you might choose to do that. So when I make my gargoyles here, I might want to make them out of a solid piece of clay and hollow it out later. What I do is um, if I form it to look exactly like how I want to and then hollow it out later, I have more control over what my sculpture looks like. But some people have more rounded sculptures like this where the body is more of an egg shape, or this, where the whole thing is more of a sphere. If that's the case, pinch pots are going to be very, very easy for you to work with. So once I have two spheres, if I want to make a more spherical gargoyle like this, I'm going to want to attach them. So in order to do that, I need to slip and score. I might want to take my needle tool and make score marks all the way across the area that I want to attach. Make X's, don't just make lines going in a single direction. But you don't wanna just make score marks on one side, you need them on both sides. Think about Velcro. You can't stick Velcro to something unless there's squiggly, scraggly marks on one side and the other side too. Um, if you are anything like me, I don't like to spend too much time scoring, so needle tools may take you a while. I prefer using a serrated rib. If you take a close look at that, it has little teeth on the edges. So instead of spending too much time scoring, you can just scrape the top of your serrated rib across the top, and it's a lot quicker. Um, you can't just stick two things together like this and expect it to stay together. You need to add slip. Slip is like liquid clay. It is um, the glue that holds two pieces of clay together. So I just add slip to one side, that's all that's needed, and stick them together like this. Any pieces of clay that you slip and score together are not likely to break apart later on, especially if you smooth out where it attached like this. You can use your fingers to do that, or you could use a regular metal rib without teeth. The reason why I am having us make two pinch pots put together like this potentially is because, like I said earlier, you can't 
fire a solid sculpture. You need to hollow it out so that the walls are no thicker than your pinky, like what I said before when I um, made my pinch pots. Once it's all smoothed out and I don't see that seam anymore, I know that's a good attachment. So I already showed you coil, I showed you pinch pot, slab is the next one. Slab might be a little tricky because if you don't do it correctly, it might stick to the table and it might be hard to take off later. So what I have is a canvas board. You might find that canvas board at a special station. If we have clay that does not stick to the table very well, um, if it comes off really nicely, then this is not needed at all. So in order to make a slab, I get my clay, make sure it's somewhat of a nice chunk of clay and it doesn't have any seams, so you might need to slap it around a little bit. I like to flatten it a little bit ahead of time so that it isn't as hard to roll my roller over that. I have two guide sticks on either side. The guide sticks have to be the same width. Sometimes you're gonna get several sets of guide sticks that are different widths. Don't mismatch them, otherwise you're gonna have a lopsided uh, slab. So they're here so that my slab is even and uniform and I don't make a big pancake. So starting on one end, I need to make sure that I roll it forward. And just out of habit, I tend to flip it. If you are rolling slabs on the table, you will definitely have to flip it every now and then. So you might notice that it's not rolling anymore because the guide sticks are stopping it from getting too thin. This is a pretty good slab. If you didn't use your guide sticks, there's a good chance it would end up uneven. So without those guide sticks, Many middle schoolers tend to start too flat and then end too flat, and then they end up making a bit of a ramp. Plus it's uneven. So uh, that's why I like guide sticks for this project. So when I'm building the body, I could have put two pinch pots together for a very spherical project or slapped it around a little bit and kind of formed that clay into more of an oval. That is closer to what my sculptures look like. It depends on your preliminary drawing. Many of you, and this is the preferred method that I used for this project, are going to want to take a piece of clay and just kind of slap it around until it's an egg shape or a bean shape. You don't want too much clay, you don't want too little clay. You might want to use about as much as like a baseball or a softball. If there are lines showing up, you gotta smooth those out or kind of slap the clay around a little bit until they go away. That is pretty good. If they're not going away and the clay is too hard, you might want to get a little bit of water on your hands in a paint cup and smooth it out. Um, only do that if you have to. So right now I have my egg shape. That's about right. I like to turn it into more of a bean shape so that it looks like it's leaning forward more. So depending on your gargoyle's pose, you may not even wanna make a gargoyle doing the same kind of pose as mine. Maybe you have a completely different thing in mind. There's so many different ways to approach this project. However, um, I think if I wanna make a dragon, I start off with my coil, it's already made for me, and I like to cut both legs at the same time. So after this one was cut, I'm gonna use that to measure the second one. Um, animal legs and people legs are always a little bit beefier at the top where they connect to the body and skinnier where they attach to the feet. So I like to cut a little bit of extra clay off of the bottom part. I call that a bevel. So I cut that at a bevel so that it has a little bit, it's kind of like a ramp. So I might want to round off the top a little bit. Before attaching this to the body, I might need to make feet. 
lots of ways to make feet and I'm going to demonstrate a couple. So you make a, you start with a ball of clay. I like to make both of them at the same time. Hmm, maybe a little too big. If you want to make like a dog paw or maybe like a dragon paw, I flatten it a little bit. I keep both fingers on either side so it flattens forward and becomes more long. While you're doing this whole process, you're gonna end up with lots of little bits of clay. If you keep them all clumped together, they don't dry out as fast. So uh, I like to use my wooden modeling tool. Any wooden modeling tool will probably work, but they all are different shapes, so they do different things. And I press it into the clay and roll it forward. Press it into the clay and roll it forward. Just like that. You could attach little claws by rolling a little ball of clay, pinching the end so it's sharp, but slipping and scoring that is very tricky. What I like to do is use just a little drop of vinegar. I'll take vinegar in a cap, I'll pour it into the cap, use my paintbrush, and just touch the end of the paintbrush with a little bit of vinegar on that area. It will disperse itself. Less is more with vinegar, because if you use too much, it will turn into mush. Vinegar dissolves the clay so that it kind of fuses together better. It's only good for small, small things like claws or teeth or tongues. It's not good for big things like legs or arms. So before attaching this, I can't just stick it there. I can't just stick water there. I have to slip and score. So scratch marks on one side, scratch marks on the other side, add a little bit of slip. Any pieces of clay that you attach should probably be smoothed out where they touch. You don't have to smooth out super, super um, in depth, but you do need to try your best to run your finger over that area. If it's a hard to get to area like this crevice right here, what I like to do is I like to get my paintbrush in water, not slip, water, and paint those little crevices with water. The bristles get in there and smooth that out really nicely. Um, I don't use slip for that method because slip leaves like a frosting texture behind and then it dries looking kind of messy. So that's why I don't do that. Um, another thing you could do is a wooden modeling tool. You could get a wooden modeling tool into those crevices like this. Um, before attaching it, I need to make sure it looks as leg-like as possible. I don't want to attach it just like this because that top nub part doesn't really blend in with the rest of the body. So I am going to cut it at a bevel again see if we can zoom in a little bit. Um, so at the back of that leg, if I cut it at a bevel, it looks like it blends in a lot more nice with the body than something that's just kind of stuck on there. So that's what I want to do at this point. It still looks kind of bean shaped. It still looks a little frumpy. That's okay. It'll come together a little later. Um, you could slip and score just the top, but then it's only attached at one very small area. I like to slip and score bigger areas so it's less likely to break off. So I'm making scratch marks on my gargoyle, scratch marks on the leg and the body, adding slip. You don't need to add slip to both sides, otherwise it just gets too slippery. Kind of like when you glue one piece of paper to another piece of paper, you don't put glue on both sides, both pieces of paper. So I have that stuck on there like that. In order to do the back legs, it depends on what you want to do. Um, one method is taking a ball of clay, balling it up to be a decent size. And this is gonna be like the meaty back part of your gargoyle's legs. If you've ever seen like a cat or a dog sit down, their upper thighs kind of bunch together to be a big, piece of clay and I like to slip and score so it looks like that. That is an easy shortcut method that I like to do. Like that. Let me cut that shorter. Um, and then make sure to smooth out that upper leg so it kind of blends in a little nicer. That's one way to do it. 
Uh, the way I prefer most is getting a coil. Uh, what I like to do is I need to make the upper part of the leg and the lower part of the leg. So I cut this at a bit of a bevel right here so that that can be a good ankle for me. Um, and this is going to attach to the the upper leg right here. Um, but the upper part's not beefy enough. So if you're coil is too thin, you can kind of move that clay around or roll another coil that's a little thicker, which I think I might end up doing. So this is cut at a bevel so that it doesn't stick straight out like this, but kind of curls back inward a little bit. The angle of your bevel, this one doesn't have one, will make it so that it doesn't stand straight out, but it attaches at more of an angle. So I'm going to slip and score that. Smooth out where it attaches. And before attaching it to the body, I gotta make sure that it looks exactly how I want it to. So smooth out any bumpy areas. Uh, round off the, the, the upper part of the leg where it attaches to the gargoyle and slip and score a bigger surface area if possible. One thing before I proceed with my gargoyle is maybe I wanna add texture to it. So my gargoyle is not gonna be hairy, um, but if he has uh, more of a hairy texture like a lion or a cat or a dog, you might want to use a needle tool. This is something you can do at any time. I'm not doing texture right now because I might, I might um, end up rubbing that texture away later with my fingers as I'm working with it, but some people might want to do that now. Um, if you want to do uh, bird feathers or scales, you might want to use either a paper clip or one of these loop tools. You can press your loop tool into the clay over and over again for a scale texture. You can do the same thing with a paper clip, but you have smaller or bigger options there. I don't want any of that. The good thing about clay is if you don't like something that you draw into the surface, any kind of texture, you can smooth that away with your hand and a little bit of water. Um, if at any point your gargoyle gets too bumpy, a craftsmanship issue I see is lots of gargoyles, lots of sculptures in general, end up a little too bumpy or rough looking. So you might want to smooth that out before moving too far ahead in the project. Kind of like this. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to round off the top of that clay. Um, might want to start over on that coil. So the upper thigh is going to be a little bit meatier, um, but I want to cut a bevel right here so that any clay that I attach kind of curls in a little bit more. Because if I just put, like I said earlier, a straight coil here, it, it's not at a good angle.
So I'm starting to accumulate lots of little pieces of clay around the table here. Those will dry out pretty quickly if I don't clump them all together. So, so far I only introduced coil and slab or coil and pinch for the body. I didn't get to slab yet. Slab is something that's going to be thin and a little flimsy. And as you're storing your project, you might end up you might end up getting it too wet and it might fall off. So those are the legs. I don't have any kind of tail yet and there's a lot of options for you. Um, if I wanna add a dragon tail, you gotta take your clay, squeeze it into a long carrot shape. And I want it to be a little bit of a thicker coil. It's not as thin as the legs of my gargoyle. So I'm gonna use both hands, start at the tips of my fingers all the way up to my palm and then back. This is not a very good tail right here. I don't want to attach this. A um, couple of reasons. The end doesn't get skinnier, kind of like your wrists are skinnier than your upper arm. Where it attaches to the body is going to be thicker. The outer part is going to be thinner, just like the leg. It was thicker upward attached to the body. It's thinner out by the ankle. So a good trick is to either roll one side more than the other until it gets skinnier or cut the end of the tail at a bevel, kind of like this, so that it is already starting to get skinnier. I just wanna roll the end a little bit more so that it smooths out a little nicer. I still don't want to attach this because the end doesn't look nice. And I have to curve that gargoyle tail a lot for it to be the right shape, so I might want to cut the end of this tail at a bevel too, kind of like this, so that when it attaches to the gargoyle, it doesn't come straight out, but it comes up at an angle. A couple dynamic poses for your tail that you might want to consider is a C shape. Maybe you want that to come out behind your gargoyle at a C shape. That way people from the front can see the tail just a little maybe an S curve. S curves are very dynamic. They seem like he was just in the middle of moving. Or you could make it curl forward so that people can see the tail from the front. I think I'm going to do an S curve. Now, the more you play with your clay, the drier it gets, the more cracked it gets. So that's why it's important to make coils out of really wet clay. And I'm going to smooth out those cracks and slip and score that. Maybe you want to um, add spikes to your tail. Um, maybe you don't want a dragon tail at all. You want more of a thinner coil. This needed to be slipped and scored to a wider part of the gargoyle body because if it was just slipped and scored at the end it would fall off because it's a very small area. Um, I haven't added any um, slabs yet so I have my slab from before. What I like to do is smooth that out using a metal rib that doesn't have serrated teeth to them and I use my needle tool to draw a wing shape. There's lots of different wing shapes you can do. This one kind of points straight outward. This one curves downward a little bit more. Um, you don't even have to have wings for your gargoyle. But what I do is I draw into the surface of the clay. The reason I do that is because if I cut into the clay and turns out, uh oh, I don't like that shape, you can't just smooth that out. The cut went all the way through the clay slab and through the back so it's smoothing it out and doesn't fix it that's why it's important to use a needle tool to draw your shape into the clay is that big enough before cutting it it's important to kind of double check your work i think it needs to be a little bigger that's why it's important to make wings that are a little bigger instead of a little smaller because you can always cut them to be smaller you can't cut them to be bigger so this is the part where I go in with my fettling knife.
problem is I need to make two wings that are the same size. So I use that first wing that I cut out as a stencil to trace another one. And I can cut that out later. Um, another problem that's occurring with this is it looks too chunky. It looks like a cookie cutter. So you might want to use a little bit of water, smooth out those sharp edges. Um, I still don't like how this isn't getting thinner here. I like my wings to be a little thinner on the ends. So I might want to cut that bevel I'm so fond of by holding my fettling knife at more of an angle. So that if you take a closer look, it gets skinnier here. You might want to smooth that out some more. I like to add any kind of textures now if it has lines for like a bat wing or if it um, has feathers. You can draw those feathers with a needle tool or you can press some kind of loop tool or, or um, paper clip into it. Now I like to add a little extra detail here. Problem is I'm not slipping and scoring it. This is a shortcut that I don't recommend for everyone because it doesn't always stick down. But if you want those coils to stay there, you might want to do what I recommended earlier. And again, I want to make the ends of this a little skinnier. So instead of slipping and scoring such a small thing, I might want to get a little bit of vinegar in a cap and just touch my paintbrush with that vinegar to my wing. It might stay. Sometimes it doesn't. It's not, it's not a surefire plan, but that's why I like to press down those coils so that it really gets stuck in there nicely. I would recommend doing the wings at the very, very end because slabs like wings, small thin areas like that tend to fall off easily. So that's why it's important to do it closer to the end, maybe even after the head is done. Um, sometimes they break off at that thin, thin area there. Maybe when you store them in your project, in your um, wooden, wooden board, you take a little piece of clay, put it underneath, and then squeeze the ends so that it rises and becomes taller and supports the wing from underneath. That way this becomes leather hard, the whole project becomes leather hard, and the, the, the wing stiffens up and becomes stronger so it won't need this support later. Right now it's very fragile. So um, that's how you make the body. A little bit later you're going to learn how to hollow out your gargoyle and make the head.